Management Services and Networks um, Committee meeting today. Thank you for your attendance. Um, I've got apologies from the Mayor and from um, Councillor Gary. And so I'll move that those be accepted. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Any discussion? All in favour, please say aye. 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 Against Gary, thank you. Um, confirmation of the agenda. Anyone want to make any comments or otherwise on that? I'll move, seconded. Councillor O'Malley, any discussion? All in favour, please say aye. 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 Yes. Carried. Thank you. On to the Declaration of Witness for Noting. And moving on, if there are no comments. Move that the note, um, the note so confirms the proposed management plan for the legal members' interests. So I'll move, seconded. Thank you, Councillor Jenkins. Any comment? All in favour, please say aye. 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 Okay, it's carried. Thank you. Part A reports. Transport activity report for the quarter end of February to September. I should have said apologies from Ms. Stokes, and you're going to leave at 3 30, in which case <coughs> he's not here, so I'm asking for the meeting. Okay, here we go. You can stay here. Can I Yeah.
Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. That's carried. Thank you. Waste and Environment Solutions. New name? Activity report. Who? Chris.
downloads here, etc. Just suggestions at this point. Yeah, it's not, they're not confirmed. Uh, they're not concrete at this point. Um, and you know, the, the response may be similar. Can, are you taking questions on the waste management and minimization plan update? Yes, sure. Okay. Um, I just have well, a few, but um, one that I will ask. It's around what the council are doing internally. Um, this is page one of that report, page 33 um, of the agenda. Each DCC activity is accountable for managing resources and minimizing waste in accordance with this plan. Uh, and each DCC activity will report annually on their waste minimization activity. Um, and to some degree, that was uh, that work reported back to the Sustainability Audit Subcommittee in the last triennium that wasn't reconvened this term. Um, and, and then in the, in the second bit of what are we doing, I see some recycling boxes that we put up on the fourth floor. Um, and there's a civic centre waste audit going on. So is that is that um, intended to replace the expectation that individual activities will take some leadership around giving effect to this plan um, the, the, in terms of this, the civic centre-wide waste audit? Um, well, is it a big data global level now rather than at an activity? Actually, I'm going to have to be honest with you, I couldn't actually give you a solid answer at that point. I wasn't aware that it hadn't been done this year um, for that uh, like reporting on, on individual uh, waste minimization activities. So I want to get back to you on that. That's fine. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, I'll just take one it's minor, but it's just the quality of the report is great. So, but just on the layout, you've got um, the paragraph 20, the act of enclosed landfill monitoring. You just note the first round of environmental monitoring has taken place, um, which is useful to know, but I suppose more useful would know that it was a good result or a. Um, uh, yeah. yeah uh, so, so far, that, um, the monitoring has occurred in accordance with the consent of the province that we discovered. Yeah, uh, I, I, it just sort of leaves some things. That means that we'll know the bad result to put a focus on the actual result of it. And I think there's a couple more spaces like that generally really good report. Thank you. On that basis, I'm now to do the question. I'm happy to move. Okay, thank you. Move. Councillor Stane, seconder. Thank you, Councillor Hall. Any, dis any discussion? All in favour, please say aye. 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 Against. Carried. Thank you. Thank you very much. Three waters. Activity report item seven. Anything you, you've had a busy quarter? Indeed. <laughs> Anything you'd like to talk about before or just answer questions? Uh, I can give you a little bit of extra information about the, um, uh, the point regarding
well above uh, the value trade level for, for at least 40 of the others, um, which means uh, quite a significant amount of water running directly into the, to the wastewater system and draining directly into the wastewater system and then causing uh, that discharge further down, uh, further downstream around the Carlow Road area. Um, the, so I guess the upshot of all of this is that we've reprioritised some work in our capital programme to, uh, to ensure that those pump stations, uh, first the Red Ave pump station and second the Carlow Road pump station are upgraded to accommodate um, this kind of event in the future. We think we'll have significant um, benefits for both the stormwater situation in the area um, but also for the, the wastewater situation um, by reducing that, that direct infiltration. Thank you. Any questions on the report or the other? Yep. Have you answered all? Uh, so, Tom, so did you say there was a deep, uh, you, you'll notice that, that immediately you get a failure at Red Air and it fails to cope. Um, so, so, is it basically a slow water move to the end across the water road and it's down that side? That's correct, yeah. So, um, <coughs> at Red Air, um, Red Air is designed for short duration, um, short duration rainfall events. Um, yeah. a, lot of our, a lot of our stormwater pumping stations are designed for that. Um, when we get long duration rainfall events um, of a particular intensity, um, that can, can um, in some cases, mean that the, the pump station is overwhelmed towards the end of the event. Um, or, and in this case, it was about 2 a.m. in the morning. Um, water level lifts at that point, um, the surface water level lifts at that point and then flows on to, to other areas. Um, so, what we found was that um, Carlton Road was overwhelmed. Uh, because of significant overland flow from, from the Red Air area and that, that basically overtops that Gordon Road um, and then flows down at this time street. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And the other question is um, just have you been in contact with my old favourite mate, Barry Hamilton, and get a check down and told him that this work, but has he been kept up to date with us? Yeah, I spent an hour in the car with, um, with Murray on Thursday morning describing what we were intending to do and how it would benefit. And you made it heavy. I believe you're supposed to. Awesome. Thank you. Councilor Wyden. Councilor Wyden. Councilor Wyden. Tom, just looking at paragraph 35 um, relating to the uh, uh, the polyforms and uh, the benches. Um, can you just, uh, how did that come about? Obviously, it was a rainfall event and things like that. So, did all the water go out through the, the main pipe or did another? Uh, no, during that rainfall event, we opened the lowest head out for um, and discharge for a period of at least six hours. Um, so, there was some discharge directly from the wastewater network screen before it hits the, the lowest head uh, pipeline. But once uh, but uh, not treated for the full extent. Thank you. Councillor Ray. Councillor Thanks for your input. Uh, the, um, just to clarify, one of the things that helped make that decision about where those pumps needed to be was that you actually had people on the ground at night watching the over water flow. So that's, I, I know this is more of a comment than a question, but it's actually good that you had people out, I think, that obviously demonstrated two things that the city was really working hard. And that you were making a decision based on what you saw. Um, I just have a question of clarification. Is it going to cost 2.2 million to do the switchboard upgrades? Is that what that figure is on? 0.45, just like. Page 48. Is it 2,200,000? So is that 2.2 million? Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. yeah, it's just actually, I'm not, I'm just, it seems like a large number, but obviously it's obviously what you've got to pay. Um, we have. So we're working on approximately 200 sites, um, and the, the, it's significant switch here at those sites. Plus, there's actually like 200 sensors out there. Uh, there's 200 separate, well, there's at least 200 separate sites, um, all of which, well, many of which have multiple switchboards as well. Um, and typically, we're paying 30, 30 k for a brand new switchboard, um, which is about like a range. Oh, okay, I got the impression it's just it's water treatment plants, but it's actually across the no, system and stuff. It covers our pumping station. Oh, okay. Thanks. Just looking at um, page 47 of the graph showing we've got 100% network maintenance done, but I'm just wondering. 
room um, just give us a wee bit more information on the plant, uh, which is sitting in the centre of the hundred. Uh, just if you can give us a wee bit more reasons for that. I'm concerned about that. Yes, yeah, so look, we, um, we have an ageing um, <coughs> aging network of mechanical and electrical assets. Um, so uh, a lot of the pump stations, the average, the average life is, is getting up around that 20 year mark, um, which means we've got a significant amount of assets. So Regimes, which is the number you see there, um, has been impacted by the level of reactive maintenance that we're doing to keep some of those assets running. Um, we, we've got two things going on at the moment. One is a uh, review of how we target that maintenance and the level of priority that we put on the plan work versus the reactive stuff. Um, but also um, uh, an investment program through that renewals work too. So some of the statistics that you see there are impacted by um, some of our failures on switchboards and that type of thing. Um, but the, the piece of work that, uh, that, that we were just talking about in terms of the switchboard renewal project will mean that there's less reactive maintenance occurring on those assets in the future as well, so you can see that number lift. Um, we're also, like I said, putting a lot of focus into how we go about delivering that program and, and ensuring that we're, we're driving as much of that plan maintenance as possible. Thank you for that. In terms of reactive maintenance, how soon do you think we can see a reduction as a result of this? Or, or do we have an Aurora type situation where we're going to see reactive for quite a while to come? That's a, that's a difficult question. I believe we should see a change relatively quickly given that um, a lot of the assets we're talking about are pumps and, and um, uh, other mechanical assets, which are relatively easily replaced. Um, you can sort of, um, with, with the pole network, for instance, um, you know, there's a large scale, uh, a large scale problem with poles everywhere, a lot of traffic management, a lot of work to achieve there. We're talking about um, replacing uh, pretty quickly and, and, and turn over. It's also, in terms of our overall spend, um, rel relatively insignificant, you know, compared with pipeline replacements and that type of thing. So we're going to be able to do the pumps uh, even though when we're still not quite meeting some of that depreciation levels in terms of spend. Look, long, long term, is, is we, we, we're looking at those trends and trying to make sure that we, can, that we are achieving the appropriate level of investment in the short term in terms of immediate need, I believe, yes. Thank you, Mr. Any other questions? Yeah, I'll just say thank you for your
Tschüss. Bitte. Apologies, I jumped to try and um, be a class to two pages at once, sorry about that. Uh, going back to my other question though, um, I've seen, uh, again, it's uh, paragraph 21, and it's about the rain on the 21st of July, and what you've seen it here is the Musselboro rain gauge recorded 92.6 millimetres, which equates to a 1 in 10, or to, uh, between a 1 in 10 and a 1 in 50. But that event wasn't potentially felt the worst in that catchment. And do, do, so I understood it was the silver stream, for example, or other parts of the catchment, and what the measures were there, because as we found out in July 2015, the rain was far worse in some parts than others. And I, don't we do this at other sites? Um, we do. Um, okay. So we rely on a number of rain gauges, um, several of which are administrated by the Metis, um, several of which are administrated by the IRC, um, and um, almost all of which are on anomalies during the rainfall event uh, on July. In July. Um, we, we saw zero reads for a significant portion of the rainfall event uh, through both the service gauges uh, and three of the OIC gauges. Um, so we chose that gauge because it gave us a full record, um, but we believe that there was a in the order of 120 mils fell in the Moscow area, um, but that all of that's not necessarily validated well enough. Okay, oh, no, that's great because, I mean, so in, in theory, or in effect, it could have been a higher event, but we just don't have the records for that in certain catchments. Great. Thank you. That is all the questions. Anyone like to move? Thank you, Councillor O'Malley. Second to Councillor Lord. Any discussion? All in favour, please say aye. Aye. Thanks. Gary, thank you. And now on to the part that I've already asked a question on the this Water safety plans, framework development and implementation. Any questions? Councillor Mathis. The uh, thing that caught my eye, just to die, was on, on page 52, and it's the related long-term renewal projects um, and $90 million um, for the pipeline, <coughs> the creek, the stream, which in all the time I've been on council, we've had various people telling us is getting near the end of its life. And it's having to be caught here and there, and bits and pieces are broken. This related long-term renewal project appears to be unbudgeted for the next 18 years. Are you happy that the current pipeline system, the state that it's in, can wait 18 years with a major water supply before we spend the $90 million required to replace it? At this stage, yes. Um, so we we are attending a um, a more detailed condition assessment and assessment of how long that, that investment can be delayed, um, and we will be doing that work in the next five years. Um, at this stage, we have both. So these assets are two of many uh, water supply assets, um, and within our within the context of our portfolio and the overall conversion of our portfolio. Um, time frame uh, is, is realistic. Um, <coughs> however, uh, we, it's something that we cons consciously and constantly assess um, to ensure that we are maintaining a resilient, um, a level of resilience that's appropriate for the city. Okay, um, you said that there are many um, water supplies. My understanding has been that the deep stream, um, the creek pipelines uh, the main water supply in the city. Uh, when you say there are many, does that mean that you consider that the city could continue to function with the other supplies, even if this um, supply went down completely for an extended period? Correct. Yes. And those other um, supplies would be uh, Ross Creek, for instance, uh, Southern Stem. Uh, Ross Creek is not on line at this stage, um, and neither is Solomon's Dam, but this includes the Tyree, that's uh, my thinking, and the power thinking, the city's thinking, uh, reflects the Tyree infiltration gallery, which provides us with 30 uh, 
megalitres per day, which is the equivalent of uh, our average daily demand is 44 megalitres per day. Um, we also have the silver stream catchment, um, which provides in the order of 30 megalitres per day, um, and a, a number of other uh, smaller sites as well that can that can supplement those those particular catchments. Um, we have the ability to transfer treated water from um, from our high levels to low levels and uh, a whole lot of other pieces of work that have been carried out already um, that provide us with a decent level of resilience in terms of managing that deep creek and deep stream renewal. Great, so you don't have, uh, you don't think we'll be in any kind of crisis if we lose deep stream, deep creek, so yes. the, the others can cope from the figures you've just given us. Yeah, correct, so right. it, it, it does rely on, um, you know, our thinking does rely on not having all of those supplies out at once, um, obviously, but um, but when we when we do have a, um, a fault on the deep creek or deep stream pipelines, uh, deep stream more importantly, um, we'll typically rectify them within a few days, um, and we have a significant amount. Of, we've, the city has invested in a lot over a long period of time in a number of assets, um, one of which is the Mount Grand Reservoir, um, which which has up to 15 days supply. Thank you. Any good questions? Councillor Hawkins. Mr. Dyer, there's reference in, on page 54 in the what's next section um, to the DIA's, um, to say to the DIA's having a lot more drinking water inquiry. Um, do we have any indication, or have we sought any indication from the DIA as to the time frames? for implementing any recommendations that come out of that? Um, so we've been working with um, a number of people with knowledge of the review and the likely recommendations of the review to, to understand what they might look like and how we might ensure that we are in a position to, to implement those <coughs> to learn from, the, from the review. Um, the, the, DIA, the DIA, as far as I'm aware, has not provided any indication of what those, what the time frames for implementation of a number of recommendations, I believe there is over 100, um, will, will be. Um, however, we're, like I said, we're, we're working with a number of people around this, what, they, what they're likely to be and how we can implement those things ourselves and how we can ensure that our approach is consistent with, um, with the recommendations of the review. Has the council ever done any work around um, what the logistic challenges and potential financial implications of ensuring all of our potable water supply was chlorinated would be? Something that is, um, that is reviewed very regularly. Um, at this stage, we, we don't necessarily see a, a, a significant financial impact to achieve that. Thank you. Any more questions? I wish to move the note to the council for the vote. Thank you, Councillor Wall, for seconding. Any discussion? All in favour, please say aye. Aye. Okay. Carried. Thank you very much. Uh, and sterling work to the staff for what has been very busy three months. Thank you. Uh, item 9, Parks and Recreation. Welcome, Mr. Miller. Great to have you. I think at your first meeting. Welcome. Did you have anything to, to say before about the report? Uh, no. And I note that I think you're meant to be assisted by Jenny Pearson today, but she's not here yet. That's correct. Okay, so um, I think there's been an indication we might get some questions on some things that you'll try and answer them if, if you can't, and we'll get back to us. That'd be great. Thank you. Questions? Council Bits of Hope. Um, questions out at the table in the graph on page 67 in relation to burial. Um, it's, the title is uh, Total Burials for the Cemeteries, and we've got two bar graphs that are a combination of cremations and burials. Um, do the cremations apply to all cremations or just the ones that are our crematorium? So the hopes figures are not included. No. Then it shouldn't be 
the title is not accurate. Okay, it's just for future reference, that's all. Um, are we able to access those numbers? Do we know? Sorry. So that, that's, um, that's Ash Burials and um, Bonnie Burials cremation. This is a separate number. We have a look at those numbers. So that well, the, the green bar, is yeah. that total promotions? That's what I'm asking. Um, my reading of that will, will clarify that that would be Ash Burials. So burying of ashes at the cemeteries, not, right. not the number of cremations carried out. So the number of cremations is a, is a different measure and that has been impacted since the... Um, well, that's what I'm after, yeah. but that's so that's not that information isn't yeah. provided by this crowd. No. So we, we, we can update that and you know, provide well, that. In, the in the future, it will be useful. I mean, it's an interesting issue, isn't it? Where my understanding is correct. We are the only operator of cemeteries. Correct. Um, but one piece of the business, if you like, uh, has been um, <clears throat> developed by a private operator, and that's fine. We've got appropriately consented, as we know. Um, but I think it will be useful for us to have more detailed information that reveals the impact that's referred to, but not shown in that graph, and also some clarity around what those colours mean. Yeah. Noted. Ready? Thank you. Any other questions, Councillor O'Malley? I want to draw your attention to um, the table at the bottom of page 69, uh, 69 um, capital projects in the local park out of the fifth. It's budgeted there at one million, which I would assume would be a fairly large capital project. And I noticed the resource consent has been granted, but it was not publicly notified. So the question I want to have is, what's the relationship between the not having publicly notified, I know it was legally not an issue to do so, but how that relates to our public engagement policy when it comes to large capital works? And why, um, in that regard, was it not publicly notified or was it publicly not involved with notification? Yeah, I know you don't know the answer. <laughs> That, that is one that I, we had expected to have some here, so I appreciate it wasn't all sufficient, so we'll make sure that it's one Yeah, so I've just raised the question yeah. for to be able to lay it on. Well, just yeah, on, so, on that matter, Madam Chair, given that the undertaking was given earlier today in respect of this matter, uh, and now the, at the failure of the staff member to consider to be here for whatever reason, um, can we have a note about it, please, that yes. answers the questions that were raised? Thank you. Yes, sir. A note for it, it won't, it won't answer, and I won't try and make some. I think the best thing would be for us to circulate a note to everyone to answer those questions and, and confirm the date of the workshop for councillors on the present plan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Councillor Hawkins. Yeah, I'm just going to make a note
informal recreational users of those facilities and I'm interested in how their views or needs are being fed into that discussion as well. I mean, we can add it to the list, I suppose. Um, yes.
which um, that is uh, sure this making me get wrong. I'm thinking about fear attendance and um, the will. Thank you.